Chronicles there. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. This is episode four of For Evans Sake Daily. My name is Ni Odate Evans. And I am Nana Evans. And we are bringing you the new cycle from a parenting perspective. Today on our show, um, we are going to be talking about Rishi Sunak's five promises to the nation yes. in his New Year speech. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> um, we will also... Oh, good Lord. Harry... Harry's back, back in the news. news. Again, again. Mike. He has alleged that his brother William has or did attack him. Mm-hmm. Bust um, him up. But, you know, what, brothers fight. You know, it happens. It happens. Um, so we're going to talk about that. We'll get into that. And then also, we're going to be talking about Prime. Uh, not Amazon, but the drink <laughs> from Logan Paul and KSI. And trying to understand why it seems to have so many people in a chokehold, um, why they're losing their minds and paying £10 a bottle for a energy drink. Uh, for an energy drink, which is mad because if you buy Boost from the corner shop, it's 39p, does the job. Uh, but I guess that's branding. Um, so anyway, let's get into this. Rishi Sunak, mm. his five promises to the nation. Do you want to know, know what these are? I do want to know what the five promises are. Okay, so these are Rishi's promises. Mm-hmm. First, we will halve inflation this year to ease the cost of living and give people financial security. Okay. Was there a how? No. Okay. None of these have a how. Right. This is just what he's pledging. And what's even interesting on this first point is that the Bank of England have already said, like, actually, we're on course to halve inflation. Okay. So it's just echoing. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Second, we will grow the economy, creating better paid jobs and opportunity right across the country. Right. How? No house. Okay. Third, we will make sure our national debt is falling so that we can secure the future of public services. Right. I don't even believe that. No, exactly. Like, I don't Ever. even believe that. Yeah. <laughs> it's something that they always say. Yeah. Do they actually think that, like, we generally care about them doing this debt thing? I, in, in general, I would like to meet someone. It's like hand on heart. I would want to meet somebody who listened to, and they're not an MP, who listened to what he said and was like, this is amazing. Like, our future looks really bright. And this is, and and these are how he could do it. Yeah. Because, okay. Yeah, yeah that'd uh, be uh, nice. Yeah. So, fourth, NHS waiting list will fall and people will get the care they need more quickly. He had to say that because the NHS is in such a mess right now. So, you have to, you have to address it. Yeah. But again, there's no how. There was no time. There's no time frame. Nothing. Okay. <sighs> okay. And fifth, we will pass new laws to stop small boats, making sure that if you come to this country illegally, you are detained and swiftly removed. And obviously you have to, as a, a conservative government, yeah. you have to signal to your base and you've got to come with the that old we are immigration. Strong on immigration. We are strong on immigration. We are strong on immigration. And ultimately, I, I was unmoved and unfazed by anything he said. Um, I don't think um, that... They say these things and they dress it up in nice words, but the reality is, in terms of parents and everyday living your life, you hear this and you think it, it has no. I, 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 nothing in those five points are anything that he hasn't said before, or we wouldn't expect. So, what's new? What are you doing? Because you, you, what have he's had like ten weeks now. Mm-hmm. So, what is he doing to solidify? I am the one to be the PM. Like, he hasn't said anything that is even He's like, actually oh, been my very word. low-key. Like, very, well, he had to, isn't it? He wants to try and get to those three months just in case the Conservative out him. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he wants to secure the bag. Oh, it's so cutthroat. But so cut definitely, fruit. he has been very low-key. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't stamped any authority. No. Yeah, okay, that's great. And, like... I, I actually think that he has been more ineffective than Liz Truss. Yeah, but at least Trust. she actually came with something. Yeah. It was dynamic. It, yeah. You know, it was like, this is what we're going to do. And she got her head cut off for that's, that. But that's saying something, man. He has literally just been, like, really towing the line. Imagine Liz Truss has more vim than Rishi Sunak. I'm Imagine. not surprised. Yeah. This should not be surprising. I mean, it's not surprising because I just think from, from the beginning, from the jump, it's like he is there to tick a box mm-hmm. in terms of his own personal career, his own personal advancement. And I do not believe, and I cannot believe, and I will not ever believe that he actually has this country's best interests at heart. 
So in that five points, then there was nothing on cost of living. The first one. What? Tell me again. Uh, you use words mm. because I think a lot of people won't directly associate that to cost of living, even though it, it does yeah, say it in there. Yeah. Because you're just hearing the word inflation and whatnot, have you? And and the average Joe doesn't really connect to like inflation feels like something intangible over there. Yes. And it doesn't affect whether they can pay for their gas, pay for their yes. electric. And I think that's how politicians need to begin to start to talk to the nation of like, I understand that you only have a thousand pounds to get through the month and your energy bills cost 1200 pounds. You... Yeah, exactly. In terms like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Right, so we, we actually get that feel of a connection that they actually understand what we are going through and they're trying to do as yeah. much as they can. To but help. how can they, when you've come from such privileged lifestyles, I just think you can, you can empathize, but how can you really understand and know what it's like to live at a certain level Mm. if you yourself are a millionaire married to a billionaire yeah you're living a completely different life this is it. And, and i think the thing that also annoys me as there was with boris for years is there still feels like there is no real opposition like nobody is countering and saying something that i'm like yeah i can get with that well Today, Keir Starmer actually has been talking this morning. Okay. And he has done his New Year's address, which I, I do not remember this ever happening. Maybe I was in a bubble every January. No, I think it... it yeah, it yeah, always yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, okay, so, yeah, I've, mm. I've never noticed this political talk going on. But he has done his. Um, he is promising to take back, it's called the Take Back Control Bill, mm -hmm. and it's to transfer power from Westminster to communities. Because he is saying that he's, that Labour have heard, they've heard that people in local communities want more power mm -hmm. and Westminster doesn't work because mm -hmm. it's like an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. So he is proposing to mm -hmm. remove some powers that Westminster have and he is going to give it to local councils. This is what he's saying if he gets... Um, if he gets elected in the next mm -hmm. election. Um, he also says that he, <laughs> oh my word, that he is saying that the government is just sticking a plaster on politics. Like this is how it is, that everything that they're doing with the NHS, NHS is just putting a plaster on it. See, that really he wouldn't me. do that. See, that really annoys me because you've wasted words and you've wasted breath. <laughs> like you've said nothing, you've added nothing. Don't watch what they're doing. Like we can all what see I, what they're doing what and I, what they're not doing. He is also saying that he will also reduce waiting times. Great, how? And he how? is going to invest more. How, Sway? He's going to invest more into the NHS mm -hmm. so that they can have more staff on board so that they can deal with the waiting list. This is what he's okay. saying. He's saying everything that Labour is pledging is going to come with how much it's going to cost mm -hmm. and they are promising these things. They are going to stick to it as well. Um, the, his main point that he laboured on, though, was that Westminster does not work. And that's the, a strong point is that he is going to really push forward with this bill to remove power from Westminster, some powers from Westminster, and give it to local council. If I'm being honest, that is probably something that I can agree with the idea on. Yeah. Whether it's executed and actually comes to fruition is a completely different story. But yes, I th it makes more sense for a lot more power to be at local levels within communities that understand how that particular community runs and operates and actually understands what it needs. I can, I can get with that. But again, I do not have any faith in any of these political parties yeah. to actually execute. And as a final word on it for me anyway, I just think that if you were working a job and you promised things the way that politicians tend to police, uh, promise things but then your execution rate mm. was the same as these politicians you would not be in a job I, I think so but then I guess it's the public we don't take them to task we don't enough. so we don't. this is why they can get away with that uh, he uh, additionally added that um, he was also going to he wanted to improve, like he was optimistic about the future of this country. I'm glad he with, is. With a Labour government, 
he would turn around the tide of politics and it would really bolster. There, there needed to be a new governance of the country and he believes that Labour can do that. And there are really good politicians and basically they're being hindered because of the way Westminster works. It's almost like he was listening to us. Yeah, that is actually what we were saying. <laughs> he watches us, man. He watches us. He could us. be watching us. He watches us. But, um, you know, it's uh, general election is probably going to be in two years' time. Mm. So he's starting his campaign for that now. Yeah. And um, I mean, things are going to really start to heat, heat yeah. up on both sides. He is saying that he is going to be um, front row and centre, in other words, to what he said, but he's going to be out there and Labour is going to be a force because they want to change the governance of this country. Labour is out here. Well, let's see what happens. I mean, we've had the Conservatives for such a long time. 13 years, is it? Um, yeah, so by the time there is a general election, that's going to be like 15 years. And, and I think also, like, it's hard for, well, I, I think it should be hard for anybody to take Tory promises seriously yes when you look back at the last 13 years yeah and you're like well what have you done yeah effectively so what's going to change right now damage the nhs like when you go there's there's a graph that's out there on mm. the bbc have you seen it where um when the tories came in the wait time was like four hours un under the previous mm. labor government and how it skyrocketed now to almost 17 hours wonderful so it's just, yeah. it, it's it's crazy. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. But this is, you know, we know this is what the Conservatives were do. going to do. Yeah. They've always wanted to privatise the health service because then they can make money from it. Yeah. And at the moment they can't. We knew this was what they were going to do. And if anybody really, I think that's what we can unite on. We should be united on as a, as a country, at least, that this is something we should be proud of and we shouldn't gutter the NHS. Yeah. And if that's all we agree on to get rid of the Tories and have somebody it's else enough. in, let's do that. It's enough. Well, let's see what happens. Yes. So Harry is back in the news again. He's really doing the circuit. And I, <laughs> I was somebody, look, I, I've, I've said it before. I, I don't really. It's not on Harry. This isn't on Harry. This is the papers have picked up an excerpt. It's not. It's, they've gone into the book. It's, it's like his they book. keep, it's but his book they that's keep being on released. throwing him. Yeah, but then also we know how PR works as well. So you know, you're you're writing a book, you're going to have PR. You're, the PR throws the papers a bone. Here you go. Like this is. But if like the media is saying they're sick of him, they're not because you keep on well, putting it's, it's, his it's, stuff out there. It's, it's you know people Nobody's like ignoring him. People in the media, people like Piers, you know. Us even to sit here, we need stories to talk about. You know what I mean? So it's like we could, people in glass houses. But I, I just think that this whole media tour probably isn't working out the way that he thought it would. And I think by now he probably thought that the public uh, would be on his side a little bit more. I think the public was on his side. So this latest excerpt that has come out into the papers um, is basically there's a part in the book where Harry details, writes in detail, um, an alleged attack from Prince William. He grabbed me by the collar, ripping my necklace, and he knocked me to the floor. <laughs> the Guardian a, quotes Harry. I, I saw a comment and somebody said, what, what did the necklace look like? <laughs> <laughs> that was the one thing that stood out to me. That says like... Necklace? No, yeah. no, it's not the necklace, yeah. but it's actually if you go further down, your there should be the thing about him falling onto the dog bowl. No, I haven't got that. Oh, okay, yeah. so he fell onto a dog bowl which broke on his fall, and he was visibly injured on his back afterwards. So he is saying that Prince William, our future king, or the future king of mm. Britain, attacked him, and that's what's out there. So again, you know, it carries on our theme of the sibling rivalry. But and they now there was fisticuffs I, I or think, a royal rumble. Yeah, I, I think the thing is this is nobody expects siblings not to have a fight at any point in time. Yeah. And so actually what you think is really controversial is all the 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 future king of England attacked I it, me. I guess it's as men though, isn't it? Like you don't expect men 
to fight. What do you I, mean you don't expect men to fight? I don't know. I mean, Who doesn't it ha- expect men to fight? I mean, fight? it happens. It, yeah, it happens. No, it's more that you don't expect that to come out. Like, you know, most people keep their family, family business, business to themselves. Yeah. Especially those types of things. Mm. You keep it to yourself. But mm. I guess this is his tell-all book, right? It's his, it's his truth to tell. And for William to say that isn't how it happened. And Harry attacked me or whatever the counter would be. I do think that the royal family do need to change tact now. because Maybe they've got to talk. They, they are absolutely under the impression that if you do not respond to any of these things, it will fall out of the media quicker. And I just think at this point, maybe so... But it, it's really, you also are not coming out smelling like roses. Like, well, it, it, it's like the whole all, family. Yeah, messy boots. Stinks. Yeah. And I think at some point you have to take the ball by the horns and at least release a statement or 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 something. Also, the other part um, that people are claiming is another reflection of their racism is... Um, I'm actually tired of the racism thing now, you know. Well, Prince William said that Megan, how the attack started was Prince William said to him, Megan is rude, abrasive. Um, it was rude, abrasive, and something else, which did lean to quite kind of stereotypes of a black woman, okay. what's out there in the media. Mm-hmm. And Harry also echoed that, that in no way has she been rude or abrasive to my brother before for mm-hmm. him to have come to these conclusions Mm -hmm. but that is how the media has painted her so it is and that's when it sparked off because he was saying this about megan um yeah again all of that doesn't help because then all of the uh you know race pundits that are out there are all saying again this shows that the royal family is racist how they've described Megan and how William has described Megan is exactly the bl- old black woman tropes that are out there, that angry black woman. It's the same thing. They're so a racist family. We need to be careful in the sense that people fling out the word racism too much now. And what's happening is, is that real racism is happening. But they take kind of small things like this. So you, William said X, Y, and Z, and it dog whistles to, you know, things that people say about black women. But like, whilst I'm not discrediting that, real racism is happening. And and because people now are just getting tired of hearing the word racism, when real racism is happening, it's like the boy who cried wolf. So when real racism is happening, people are less open to to accept. Yeah, that's because all they're doing is going, oh, racism again. I I get what you're saying, but I am... I I think... I I don't care that anybody is saying that the royal family are racist because they are. Mm -hmm. So however you come to the conclusions, they are. They haven't shown anything to not be racist. They are the head of the Commonwealth. They're stealing from around the world. They benefit from colonialism. They're racist. So, you know, how you paint the conclusion, small steps, big steps, Mm. it's there. So it's like, yeah, if you don't really know the woman and you're using stereotypical tropes to describe her, that is a form of racism. Because you weren't saying, oh, she doesn't talk a lot. Like, you wasn't using obvious stereotypes about her. You went straight to generally what is cast on black women. So the more they are getting heat in the press, I don't mind. I I would prefer that they leave. I'm (laughs) I'm absolutely at that point now where... I am. I'm. We are tired. Yes, we are yes. tired. How how we get to yeah. the end of the monarchy is how we get to the yeah. end of the monarchy, yeah. and it ain't gonna be clean, yeah. is it? Yeah. So if it's a bit messy, and and all of the people that always talk about race are talking about it, and that causes the end, I'm all for it. We don't need them. They're they're, they're a waste of money. So, but but what about the tourism? Yeah, we can keep their castles. People will come. <laughs> but they want to <laughs> come. You don't, it's not like when you come here, you're you're seeing a royal. Yeah, no, true. <laughs> you're not. You're just going to a building. Yeah. So yeah, we don't actually need that family. They can, they can just be sirs or something. Okay. Yes. So, mm-hmm. prime, mm. prime drink, KSI. Can't lie, I want to try it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do, uh, look, I definitely am somebody 
in the past that has been majorly influenced by advertising. The, you know, usually when McDonald's are like, we got uh, a yeah, new yeah. burger. Absolutely, get I got to go. I got to go try that burger. <laughs> um, but this, and I think it's because I don't like, um, I don't like when something is fashionable. So I don't like when everybody is is saying this is the thing. Mm. And so seeing all of the clamor around this drink and already knowing that Logan Paul and KSI enjoy like uh, high levels of fame. Are you hating? Am I hating? Yeah. Is that what hating is? I think so. Because it's like you're against their marketing campaign because they are already rich. That's hating. Like it's just their marketing has worked. There's, there's nothing else to it. I, People go out and buy toys and they sell out, and then they go onto eBay at like five times the price. These guys are maybe just I am. A drink. Maybe I am, but I don't like it. I don't like it. I, like... I don't think it's that bad, really. Other yeah. than the scenes in Aldi, the scenes but that's in Aldi, great marketing. Like you know, you put the drink out in Aldi, it's. One ninety nine that sells out everywhere, and for the people, the wholesale, the, you know, the small shops that were able to get it, the corner shop people, they're now selling it from ten to fifteen pounds. There was a story of a dad who drove, I don't know, silly miles to this shop, and literally spent grands in buying out the stock got grand to spend and i and i just i don't understand it because ultimately you're buying an energy drink yeah and then the thing on top of that that now is also getting on my nerves is that they have recently announced that they are now going to release a prime over 18s drink and i think that's actually really oh, irresponsible it's probably going to be like a hooch i think it's insanely irresponsible <laughs> and 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 this is and this is what i'm saying so this is what i I don't like that they've used their influence in this way, which ultimately is going to impact our children. Our children are going to see this. I'm not talking about our children, our children, but the, the children of the generation are going to see these things. And without proper guidance and whatnot have you, are going to think, yeah, great. This is the thing to have. And naturally, if you're a young person buying the prime drink, the next step is to what? I think almost all brands have done similar. And so I'm not. Who else has done hustle. that? Who else Everybody has done that? Everybody did. You caught. Show me a show me a brand that's done you a, a normal version. Children. No, no. I'm talking specifically about uh, going from a normal something to an adult version of it. Well, you could even say that with Coke, pairing up with alcohol. You caught children. No, no, no. You get kids used to it. And then there's a graduation. They're already used to the substance and then they mix it with alcohol. It's there every... But it's Coke just a isn't business marketing model. the alcohol. Coke is a marketing Coke. No, but you know that it pairs with it. And that's, you know that, that kids not, already know what Coke is. That's different. So it's like if if kids are buying Prime and then finding out that the, the Prime energy drink mixes well with alcohol, great. It's got nothing to do with the kids going for Prime because they didn't come at it with Prime. They came at it with getting kids on the internet to follow them. That's their influence. Then you've given them this next substance and then you've moved on because your, your demographic is going to get older and you're moving along with the age and so now you're mixing it with alcohol. You're adding in, you're just building your brand. People build their brands like that. It's nothing... <sighs> Is nothing new. It's just a, a branding model that they're following. And generally, the model now is you get them young. So this is what this is what people are going to do. It's like programs have done it. Influencers are going to do it. You're going to go for a younger market and you're going to hope that they stay with you longer because they're young and they'll grow with you and you give them different products to consume as they're growing up with you. So as a parent, how do you, so especially parents of our age, we're of a vintage where we knew life before the internet and life mm. after the internet. So I feel like we're a bit more savvy when it comes to approaching the internet, whereas children now are growing up in the internet. Yeah, and totally they, influenced and, by and it. And so they're totally influenced by it. So as a parent now, how do you navigate this and ensure that your children, I guess, have the same level of savviness that we have knowing life pre-internet and post-internet? I think it's for the parents to use their discernment to not feed into it. When all the clips I was watching was full of adults buying the drinks. 
So even that father that went and spent grand buying the drink, like it's for the parents. So you, you parent. If you don't see anything wrong with it, that's how you're going to parent. You're going to be like, it doesn't matter. That's what they're into now. And then you're going to go and buy it. It's, it's how people were influenced heavily by TV. It's the same thing. It's just now mm-hmm. the influence is on the internet and that's humans. Humans are going to be influenced by other humans. It's, it's about discernment. And that should be heavily a part of the curriculum is that you know what discernment is. You know how to critically analyze society. You know about marketing so that you can navigate through this world or you're always going to be susceptible to it. So that's really it. I hear what you're saying. So shall we go and buy a bottle today then? <laughs> so I said I want to try it. I'm only paying one ninety nine for it though. So we're going Audi. And they they sold out swiftly. I, yeah, <laughs> like, I, I think I, I would I would actually literally begrudge even giving one ninety nine for it. Like I'm like, oh, that's how much a Red Bull is, isn't it? Yeah, but I. I back on my hater stance. <laughs> like I'm not giving them one ninety nine. Like I'm not doing it. Like I will. Someone else can buy it and I will try some, um, but I am not interested in giving Could it be classed as a black-owned business? It's a half-black-owned business. Hmm. And it's probably less than half because I, I doubt that the, the split is 50-50 between hmm. the two of them. There's obviously other I people wonder. Involved. I wonder what their split is. I really would love for them to give a talk on just the business. Like what's done and all of that. You know what? That's very interesting for young people as well to see. This is the world that we're living in. It's going to be about influence and how you're influencing and what business you're building. It's like okay, this is interesting for other young people to be like. If I have a little bit of a an influence about me, what type of business could I create around that? And then then their ethics come into it. What are you going to put out there? It may not be an energy drink. It may be a really good water that is infused with Mm, something. Like mm -hmm. it may be more nutritional. Mm. Who knows? No, yeah, I I hear that. I think definitely when it comes to, I I don't know too much about Logan Paul. I don't really follow him, but definitely KSI. Um, You know, his music may not be my cup of tea, but I I can say that I respect what he's done. His hustle is Um, something else. And just just even the idea of all those years ago sitting, playing games. I remember like seeing this kid on the internet years ago. Pranks. Yeah, (laughs) but not thinking anything of it. Just like these are kids having fun on the internet. Yeah. And to see where he was and to see where he is that's amazing that you you've built this this amazing business and so i will i will give props to that i think probably jumping on 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 what you said my main focus would be i i would want our children to understand the power of influence yeah. and be able to use that in a in a positive way in their lives yeah. and affect and, and and so affecting other people's lives as well yeah because they could do that i mean they put out maybe they'll grow they're still young I still think there's 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 room for growth in that. It, 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 they could yeah, change. Yeah. They, they could sway in a different direction. But definitely with influence, I think it's a model to learn to actually like how are you how are you using your influence in the world? What are you putting mm-hmm. out there? Is it something that you actually want? Like do do you truly believe that another energy drink is is helping the world? Yeah. But then you have to grow into that space to actually yeah. even be thinking like that. Yeah. So let's let's see. Let's see. They're young and people, you know, and they're, they're drinking money. worse, probably. Yeah, yeah, they're making back, they're making back. Well, that's us. Yes. That's another for Evan's sake daily. Yes. Um, we are always interested in hearing uh what you guys are saying. So please feel free to comment on the videos that you see across social media. Um, if you're watching us live, feel free to comment in the chat and also DM us, tell us if there's, you know, specific stories that you want us to talk about. Um, we're happy to talk about those as well. We're definitely waiting for those story ideas to come in and yeah, j- join in the chat, please. Cause it's, it's fun. It's really good for us to get different perspectives Absolutely. as well. It's nice to have some engagement. So yeah. Brilliant. Like, follow, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.